What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, four division world champion, Mexican superstar Bassa, who is widely considered by many to be the number one pound for pound face of the sport of boxing, and undisputed super middleweight world champion, superstar Bassa, Saul Canelo Alvarez, who has 59 wins, two losses, two draws. 39 big wins by way of knockout, 33 years of age, 5 foot 8 with a 70 inch arm each. He once again takes the opportunity to throw a shot at undefeated three division world champion, former junior welterweight undisputed world champion, currently the reigning undisputed welterweight world champion, who is widely acknowledged and recognized as the number one best pound for pound fighter in the world, in Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence Crawford is now 40 wins, no loss, no draw, 31 big wins by way of knockout. He is 35 years of age. He'll be 36 September 28th, 5'8", with a 74-inch arm each. Canelo Alvarez is tired of the conversation and the talk that Terrence Bud Crawford is acknowledged and recognized as the number one fighter in the world. And now that Terrence Crawford is coming off the biggest lucrative the biggest marquee fight of his career, July 29th, Las Vegas, Nevada, T-Mobile Arena, when he took on and defeated now former unified three-belt WBA, WBC, IBF, welterweight world champion, superstar boxer, Earl the True Spence Jr., who is now 28 wins, one loss, no draws, 22 wins by way of knockout, 33 years of age, five foot nine and a half with a 72-inch armage. With that said, it was on paper, supposed to be a 50-50 fight if there ever were one it was supposed to be a competitive fight it was the most anticipated fight in 10 years and it was uh for history history was on the line it was an undefeated undisputed welterweight showdown there's never been a four major sanction belt undisputed welterweight world champion there's never been a two division undisputed four major sanction belt welterweight world uh world champion terence crawford had the opportunity to become a two-division world champion and undisputed, which he did. And Errol Spence had the opportunity to become undisputed, hold all four major sanction belts since the last undisputed champion was uh, Hall of Fame superstar iconic boxer Zab Judah, but that was a three-belt era. Now, Errol Spence, technically, if the, he was in the, era, the Zab Judah era, he would have been undisputed because the last belt to be recognized as one of the major sanction belts was the WBO, the World Boxing Organization. Errol Spence held the other three titles that Zab Judah held that made him undisputed. But he still needed the last piece of the puzzle to become undisputed and undoubtedly the best fighter in his division and the only champion in his division. And he came up short. It wasn't a competitive fight. Terrence Crawford dominated the fight, dropped Errol Spence in the second round, twice in the seventh round, and stopped him in the ninth round. With that said... Terrence Crawford puts on such a dazzling performance, such a shocking performance, and wins so one-sided in a fight that was seen to be 50-50, the boxing world acknowledges him as the number one fighter in the world, undoubtedly. And Canelo Alvarez is not happy about that. And Canelo Alvarez, he says that he had a lot of injuries in his last few fights. The fight with Dimitri Bivol, to which he lost and took his second official loss, and the fight with John Rada and the trilogy with Gennady Triple G Golovkin, he had a lot of injuries. He wasn't himself and wasn't able to train. And he still recognizes himself as the best fighter in the world and says that after his fight, his highly anticipated September 30th showdown with three-time junior middleweight world champion, undisputed junior middleweight world champion, superstar boss who was top five pound for pound best fighters in the world, and Jamel Ironman Charlo, who has 35 wins, one loss, one draw, 19 wins by way of knockout, 33 years of age, 5 foot 11 and a half with a 73 and a half inch arm each. So Canelo's saying, once I beat Jamel Charlo in dominating fashion, then the world is going to recognize me once again as they should as the number one fighter in the world. Not just a draw, not just a pay-per-view cash cow but the best fighter in the world. 
Now to that, he says, when asked about Canel Terrence Crawford being considered the best fight in the world, Canelo Alvarez, he states that Terrence Crawford has one win in his career, and that win, one win coming at the hands of Errol Spence Jr. in his last fight, which is completely untrue. I went through both of their resumes, and I pointed out the obvious, which is in all of Canelo Alvarez's biggest fights outside of one, he came up short. His biggest fight of his career was when he fought Floyd Mayweather. He lost every single round of Floyd Mayweather. The second biggest fight of his career was the first Triple G fight, and many people, it ended in a draw, and many people thought Gennady Golovkin won that fight. Then he came back in the rematch and had a controversial victory over Gennady Golovkin in the rematch to which many people thought that Gennady Golovkin won the rematch, okay? Uh, and then he did to be great. He jumped up to light heavyweight and fought what was arguably seen as one of the best light heavyweights in the world, arguably the best light heavyweight in the world in Dmitry Bivol. And he lost all but three rounds in that fight, okay? So he has come up ex uh, extremely short in his biggest fights in his career. And then you factor in the fight he had with Erislandi Lara, where people thought that Erislandi Lara won the fight, or at worst, it should have been a draw. Nonetheless, he got the victory over Erislandi Lara. Uh, the biggest names in his career were guys that he was past it. Like he stated that Terrence Crawford has never fought nobody. Well, when you look back at his career, uh, he beat Miguel Cotto, who was not the same guy when he beat Miguel Cotto. Uh, he beat Shane Mosley. He was not the same Hall of Famer he was when he beat him uh, in his in the past. He was far past his prime. Okay, these are guys that Canelo Alvarez has beaten. Uh, outside of that, he became undisputed at, junior mid at super middleweight, but he didn't beat any Hall of Famers, any world-class fighters. He did beat world champions, but when you look at their resumes, compared to Terrence Crawford resumes, what have they done, okay? Uh, you, uh, Caleb Plant, I love Caleb Plant, skill fighter, uh, but Caleb Plant, biggest win was Jose Uscategui, okay? Uh, then you look at Billy Joe Saunders. What Billy Joe Saunders' biggest win was beating David Lemieux handily. Uh, when you look at Caleb Smith, who did Caleb Smith beat in his career? These are the guys he beat to become undisputed at super middleweight. He didn't beat the best fighter at super middleweight, which is widely considered the undefeated two-time WBC super middleweight world champion and the Ecuadorian Mexican monster in David Benavidez, who was considered the best super middleweight in the world before Canelo Alvarez came in that division. Okay, uh, Then you look at uh, uh, his victory at light heavyweight where he became a four division champion he beat what was considered the weakest link in the division which was sergey krusha kovalev for his wbo title sergey kovalev when you look at sergey krusha kovalev uh sergey kovalev you know um was far past his prime and he was arguably winning the fight until that you know mysterious knockout that canelo alvarez had over sergey kovalev but he was the weakest link at the division. The best fighter at the division was Dimitri Bivol, an undefeated, unified, light heavyweight world champion, in um, uh, Arthur Bedebiev, okay? So he didn't fight either one of them. And then when he did, he lost to Dimitri Bivol, okay? Then you look at, again, uh, you just go through his resume with a fine tooth comb. Now, he did beat the likes of Danny Jacobs, which was a very, very solid win. And he did get the wins over Gennady Golovkin. But those are the biggest wins and the, and the unification over Austin Trout, to which there was controversy in that win over Austin Trout, okay? Uh, so when he says that Errol Spence is the best fighter Terrence Crawford beat, no doubt. But when he says he only has one win compared to his resume, uh, that's where it gets dicey, okay? Because when you look at uh, Terrence Crawford's win over Victor Postal in the unification bout, Victor Postal was seen to be the, the, the monster in the junior welterweight division. Okay, and Terrence Crawford dropped him twice, handily beat him every single round. Okay, then you had a top 10 pound for pound fighter in Yuriokis Gamboa. Yuriokis Gamboa uh, was top 10 undefeated multi division world champion, Olympic gold medalist. He knocked him out. Okay, I uh, know people say, well, Gamboa came up in weight class and Gamboa, you know, was a small guy, but no, Yuriokis Gamboa 
was a, a, a fighter that came up in weight. Yes, but Terrence Crawford came up in weight. Uh, Terrence Crawford was in 135 division. Right now, Canelo Alvarez is giving a fighter guy in Jamel Charlo who's jumping up two weight classes. And he says, when I beat Jamel Charlo, I'm going to be recognized as the number one fighter in the world. So, no, Canelo Alvarez has come up short in his biggest fights and has controversial wins. Terrence Crawford has none. He has no controversial wins. He has all knockouts in his biggest wins, in his biggest fights, uh, on the biggest stage. He shows up. So, no, that's why... That's the difference. In Canelo Alvarez's biggest fights, he doesn't separate himself. In Terrence Crawford's biggest fights, he separates himself. When he fought Sean Porter, he knocked Sean Porter. He stopped Sean Porter, dropped him down, dropped him twice, knocked him down twice, and then got a stoppage. When he fought Kell Brook, he stopped Kell Brook. When he fought Errol Spence, he made it look easy and stopped Errol Spence. When he fought Gamboa, he stopped Gamboa. When he fought uh, Victor Posto, he dominated and dropped him twice. So in his biggest wins, in his biggest moments, he separated himself. In Canelo Alvarez's biggest moments, he has controversy and arguably lost all his biggest moments. So let's keep that in mind. So that's why Terrence Crawford is recognized widely as the number one fighter in the world. And that's why Canelo Alvarez is viewed as a top 10 fighter, but not the number one, just as the face and a major draw and a cash cow, period. And that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. So all I got for y'all. I'm gone. Peace.